he's been around <coughs> several years here at the Recife, but he is now he's from the uh, University of High School of High Economics in Moscow. And uh, we are working together since long time. And uh, we are glad in having you here. I must tell before giving you the, the opportunity of presenting your, your talk, uh, please let's check. Can you share your presentation, first of all, to see if uh -huh. it's working? Share the screen. Share the screen, yeah. Nothing. So, okay, it's okay. And? and blow it up, please. Yeah, here, more. Stop recording reactions. No. Oh. If I yeah. do it like this. Okay, okay, good. Then use the presenter view. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I must tell that these networks, uh, Latin American network of condensed matter physics and material science, is organized by several universities in Latin America. And part of this <clears throat> network are the Universidade Nacional Maior de São Marcos em Lima, no Peru, que é a decana das Américas, a Universidade de Barranca, no Peru, a Universidade Nacional de Colômbia, em Bogotá, a Universidade Nacional de Colômbia, eh, em Barranquilla, a Universidade do Norte, também na Colômbia, a Universidade da Zulia, eh, na Venezuela, o Sinvestaf, no México, o C a Universidade Católica do Norte, no Chile, a Universidade de São Sebastião, também no Chile, o Centro de Investigação de Materiais Avançados, no México, a Universidade Federal Rural do Rio de Janeiro e a Universidade Federal de Pernambuco, no Brasil. Nós temos ainda hoje como panelista e nosso amigo Stuart Holmes da Universidade de Cambridge e da University College of London. So, uh, Alexei, now is your turn. You can start. Okay, so actually, what I'm going to tell you now is the, well, it's written exotic magnetic flux patterns in superconductors between type one and type two. And I must tell this, this is a very long and very wide project, which uh, encompasses very many universities. And uh, it started by two of us, the Professor Shanenko from then University of Antwerp, and then me, then from University of Bayreuth in Germany. And uh, of course, Albina Aguiar, then it continued in Brazil, and it was uh, actually in collaboration with Professor Peters and Milosevic from the University of Antwerp. Then it was also the, <clears throat> we had a collaboration with Argonne National Laboratory USA, and now the University of Melbourne, when one of my students is now currently staying. And this is not only the theory, it's also experiments. Uh, we are doing experiment with two experimental groups, and actually now with four experimental groups, one in München, Munich uh, with Professor Mühlbauer, neutron spectroscopy, and uh, Kubit from uh, um, Institut Laue Langevin Grenoble, France. And uh, currently we are doing something with Professor Stolarov from the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology in Russia. And also, uh, well, this fourth group is actually from Sweden, but I, <laughs> it's joined us only recently. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, 
Well, the first thing which I'm going to tell you is very elementary. I'm going to basically say what is the topic of the talk. And you know that there are two types of the superconductors. This is a textbook stuff. And one is type one and one is the other one is type two. Uh, the type one is has only the Meissner state without the magnetic flux inside the superconductor. And of course the normal state and the type one can have in principle in the bulk the Meissner state and the mixed state when the magnetic flux enters the superconductor bulk in terms of the vortices. And of course you have the surface superconductivity, but I, I'm not going to tell you about this right now. <clears throat> The difference in the magnetization, if you measure the magnetization here, is in the type one superconductor, you have the Meissner state and then the magnetization rises. So it's perfect diamagnet. Then it reaches the critical magnetic field and it drops to zero to the normal states. The superconductivity is destroyed. The type two does not have this first order phase transition. You still have the Meissner state and the linear rise of the magnetization. Then it reaches the first critical field and the bulk, of course, and then you have the uh, gradual uh, penetration of the flux and the magnetization drops gradually to the higher critical field uh, HC2. So this is in the bulk. And these are the two uh, superconductors. And if you consider how the magnetic flux penetrates the superconductor, then you see that it comes in terms of the vortices. And these vortices in the type two superconductor are repulsive, uh, whereas the vortices in the type one superconductor are attractive and they are unstable. So the vortices are in type two superconductor, they form, if there are many of those vortices, they form the fabricos of lattice. They are all repulsive. This lattice, well, here I put two types of lattices. The original one was the square lattice. Later, it was discovered that the triangular lattice is more energetically stable. And everything is, uh, this type of the superconductivity is related to the Ginzburg-Landau parameter, which is the ratio of two characteristic uh, lengths in the system, the magnetic penetration length lambda and the uh, coherence length psi, and their ratio, if it is more than one, uh, then the superconductor is of the type two. And if this ratio is less than one, then the superconductor is of the type one. But the question arised, and the, 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 there was a question since the early ages of the superconductivity, what happens when this uh, critical Ginzburg-Landau parameter is close to one? And it happens in many metals. Well, not so many, but uh, quite a sizable chunk of the metals, they have this, uh, um, Ginsburg Landau parameter close to one. And it was found that uh, actually the, uh, the state, uh, the, the penetration pattern of the fluxes inside the superconductor is kind of intermediate. So it has the chunks of the or domains of the Meissner state uh, without uh, vortices and without any types of the magnetic flux. And they have the magnetic flux penetrating like in the type two superconductor. So you have the type one and type two superconductor in just one and a single uh, in a single bulk in a single sample. Uh, this was uh, you, you can see from the references which are given here. This was known since the late sixties, so practically since the early days of the superconductivity. But the, the, uh, the research continued and uh, more and more uh, dif different materials was discovered like Zirconium Baron 12. Uh, and this experiment was done relatively lately. So it was uh, 2014. And they found that uh, actually, if you decrease the temperature at first, it was uh, here. You can see it here uh, at first, it was the standard triangular lattice. And then when you decrease the temperature, the lattice breaks down and forms something like, uh, you know, it's vortices form chains or labyrinths or something like this. Uh, actually, if you compare the magnetization pattern of this kind of intermediate or intertype superconductors, then you will see that uh, it's also in between the two patterns, type one and type two. So 
it's as in type one, you first have the drop, you first have the rise, of course, the linear rise of the magnetization. And then it drops as if it would be the type one superconductor, but not to the to zero, but to some finite value. And from this finite value, it continues to drop uh, gradually until it reaches the higher critical uh, higher critical field. So it looks like the pattern is a mixture of the two magnetization pattern. Okay, so this is what uh, the people people just took one of the uh, materials and dope this material so that they will change the uh, Ginzburg Landau parameter. And they figured they, they have plotted uh, the they managed to, to plot the phase diagram uh, basically based on these magnetization patterns. So here it's uh, the type one superconductor, here is the type two superconductor to the left and to the right of this. Uh, 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 phase diagram, but in the middle, if you decrease the temperature, then you will see that uh, you, you have the uh, finite interval uh, of the superconductivity, which was called type 2, 1, or the intermediate uh, type of the superconductors, as I said, with this feature of the boss. And uh, so this is what I'm going to tell you what happens in this middle type of the superconductivity type 2, 1, or I call this intertype for the reason which will become later clear. And basically, uh, as I said, uh, to summarize the vortices, we all talk about the vortices, vortices in the type 2 superconductor, they are stable, and they are repulsive everywhere, and the special configuration which they form is the mixed state uh, of the mixed state is the standard vortex lattice. Of course, I'm not talking about pinning or any related effects. It's just a clear, the superconductor bulk as type. So everything is just uh, as close to the textbook as it possibly could be. And the type one superconductor is that vortices are unstable. They are attractive. The, the interaction, they, they form the Meissner state. If the vortices are formed, basically the superconductor, the superconductivity breaks down. So I will talk about the intermediate type. Vortices are stable, can be stable and unstable. They can be attractive and repulsive. And what is even inter more interesting is that you will have the many vortex interaction, and this will be uh, the substantial part of the interactions. And the special configurations are very exotic, so that we could could be lattice cluster, chains, droplets, and something else. Okay, so these are the questions which I'm going to address. The first one is. Can one describe this vortex, vortex matter theoretically? How can you describe this? You see, the problem is that Ginzburg-Landau theory fails, and the micro, microscopic calculations are too demanding, typically, even now. Uh, then, so basically, how can uh, can you reliably uh, describe this theoretically? The, the, if you find uh, the way to describe this, then the next question is, is this regime, the intertype regime or type 2-1 regime, is uh, universal or it is just the, you know, it belongs to some very, very limited class of the superconductors. And actually the third question is related to this one. If this is universal, then it can be observed somewhere else uh, except from this low kappa superconductors or there is a very large class of the materials you can also observe the same behavior. And the, before I uh, tell you how can you describe the superconductivity, I will briefly tell uh, why the Ginzburg-Landau equation fail in this particular case. It's enormously successful everywhere, in, including the type two and the type one superconductors, but basically fails once you have to you want to describe something which is uh, close to this critical uh, the intertype domain. Basically, the the problem with the Ginzburg-Landau equations is that. Uh, you have either the type two superconductors, depending on this uh, Ginzburg-Landau parameter kappa, whether it is greater than one or less than one, or you have type one and type two superconductivity, and everything what is in between is actually uh, localized in a single critical point, uh, which is the famous critical parameter, one divided by the square root of two, and it does not depend even on the temperature. So if you plot the phase diagram, which is on the right, then you will see that essentially it is a single line, which is non-temperature dependent. So once you cross this line, the superconductivity abruptly changes, well, if it would be described by the Ginzburg-Landau theory. 
what is uh, the problem? But the problem is that the Gibbs energy, if you calculate the Gibbs energy of the superconducting state using the Ginsburg-Landau theory, and you calculate this uh, at the critical temperature, then you will see that actually all Ginsburg, uh, the, the all the uh, Gibbs energy, all the Gibbs energy of all possible states would be the same. So the theory is infinitely degenerate. All possible mixed state configuration with arbitrary number of vortices, with arbitrary position of vortices, and actually not only vortices, they all have the same energy. Uh, which, in other words, I would say the vortices do not interact because you can put them everywhere. And the Ginsburg Landau theory is actually becomes exact if you consider the BCS theory, the uh, microscopic theory, then the Ginsburg Landau theory is in the limit of the T going to TC is exact. So it's all what you can have in the superconductivity. So then the question is this is the actually related to the degeneracy. So it is related to the symmetry of the theory somehow. And if you break the symmetry, then if you then you break the degeneracy and it will create some finite interval where you can see this crossover effect on the intertype of the superconductivity. So this is the idea. And this is so general that actually it has to work whatever theory you use, whatever theoretical approaches you use. And the idea of us, and that was how it's uh, this all started, we just uh, used the perturbation expansion. The perturbation expansion with respect to the two parameters. One parameter is the proximity to the critical temperature. The other parameter is the proximity to this critical uh, value of the Ginsburg-Landau parameter. And we calculated the energy of the Gibbs state calculated in the limit of uh, the uh, critical field and the difference with, between this energy and the Meissner state. Okay, so we just calculated this and we use the uh, standard microscopic theory in whatever form you use. Uh, you, you use either BCS directly, or you use the uh, Bogolyubut-Vigen equations, or you use the Eilenberger equations, you will get exactly the same. And this exp expansion looks very, very simple. So you have the, if you just keep the linear part of this expansion, these are these two terms. And the zero term, which is uh, here in the middle, you can have the zero term, but it disappears precisely because the, we have the degeneracy. So we have the degeneracy in that you've subtracted Meissner state energy that will give you zero. Okay, then after all pages and pages and pages, tens of pages of calculations, you arrive to a very simple formula, which is given here. Essentially, all the expansion looks like this. You have just two constants, Ci and Cj, and two other constants, I and J themselves. And this constants, Ci and Cj, depends on the uh, microscopical parameter of the system. So the band structure, the masses, uh, how many bands, and so on and so forth. Uh, and I and J depends on nothing but the solution of the Ginsburg-Landau equations at these critical points only. And at these critical points, the solution is very interesting where the degeneracy comes from, because it is a self, this is so-called the self-dual theory. The self-dual theory, it means that only that in this uh, context that the magnetic field is related to the order parameter uh, simply by this simple form. And they have exactly the same critical, exactly the same characteristic lengths. And this equation becomes of the, not of the second order differential equation, but of the first order differential equation. So this is the mathematical explanation of the degeneracy itself. So essentially, uh, you have only two constants which are related to the uh, to the uh, <coughs> uh, to the macroscopical parameters of the theory, so of the bonds. And this dependence, then it's, it's actually this uh, expression, uh, tells you that this dependence, whatever you're obtaining, is very universal. It's all these constants. It's, it's, it's just those these constants, and this is it. And uh, all the material parameters enters only into these constants. Okay, then what we have taken next, we have taken the textbook 
uh, model for the superconductivity, which is essentially the spherical Fermi surface uh, and, uh, three, with, with, in three dimensions. And we calculated all, all the parameters, and it turns out that it does not depend on the macroscopical parameters. We have calculated the uh, boundaries of this uh, intertype domain, and these boundaries of the intertype domains are given by the numbers. So these numbers are 0 0.95, the upper boundary, and minus 0 0.07 is typically the lower boundary. We plotted them in a the phase diagram and summarized all the known data for the clean samples. We calculated on different materials, different circumstances, different experiments, different papers. And all what we have is quite a very good agreement, so to say. So this is a really uh, interesting result that this uh, behavior is universal. It's a remarkable confirmation of the universality of the phenomenon. And uh, now I will tell what happens with the vortex interaction in this uh, domain of the superconductivity. Here you can see the phase diagram when I put uh, towards single vortices and no single vortices, where basically I split them into two. And what happened is this, why is there is a difference and why there is a line separating the sub, so two subdomains? It's actually the following. If you start with the red spot, the vortices are completely, the pair of vortices are repulsive, as it should be for the type two superconductors. Then for the yellowish, uh, or, or for the orange uh, point, the vortices started to be attractive at long distances, but still repulsive at short distances. Then you go to the green deeper into this domain, and you will see that the vortices are still repulsive at the short distances, but this distance of the repulsion shrinks. And then you cross this line, which is in the middle of this diagram, and then you will see that the vortices becomes completely attractive. So it looks like you are entering the type 1 superconductors, but it is not. And the difference between this is that the vortices in this domain becomes not the pairwise interacting. So the, it's on, not only the pairwise interaction uh, which determines the, uh, the state of the vortices. And uh, I will tell, I will show now, uh, we actually calculated how the vortex configurations looks like this. Uh, so basically what we did, we took the end vortex solution of our uh, Ginzburg-Landau theory, which we call the Bogomolin equation and this degener degenerates critical point. We use the perturbation theory to find out the energy of the vortices. And once we know the energy, we minimize this energy by varying the vortex position using some kind of metropolis algorithm. So basically, you, you, can do, you can do molecular dynamics, you can do the metropolis algorithm. Essentially, uh, there it is by randomizing movements, you can find uh, the minimal energy of the vortex state. And here are two examples. The type 2 is the vortex lattice, uh, and the type 1 is the lamellus, uh, uh, which is what you expect. Uh, it's a uh, very standard thing. Lamellus, because uh, you keep the vortex flux, you keep the total flux through the sample fixed. If you don't keep this, of course, the lamellus will disappear if you are lower than HC, but we now keep the vortex fluxes. Now I will show you what happened in between the two uh, configurations. So first is uh, you start with the upper one is the type two superconductor, then you go and you already see that the vortices, the lattice of the vortex start to break down when the field is small. So they, it clusterizes. You have voids. You have voids of the Meissner state inside the vortex lattice. And the vortex lattice breaks down. And this breaks down continues to the larger field because the distances between the vortices become smaller and smaller. So here, you see this uh, continues, the trend continues. The vortex clusters becomes uh, forming something like chains. And then something else happens. The, before this at uh, higher kappa, you see that the vortices inside the clusters are, are still forming the lattice. So these are the standard trigonal lattice. And now from this point, they start towards something which is irregular, more or less irregular. And this is something like a liquid. 
this liquid becomes more and more liquid like until they're actually forming droplets which are round and uh, at the same time you can see simultaneously you can have the situation in which you have giant vortices or lamellas with the flux and when this lamellas becomes larger they still form the vortex clusters so this is how it looks like so this is the summary of what I have just shown. So you have the in between the type two superconductor vortex lattice and type one superconductor vortex lamellas. You have the long range attraction clusters. You have the vortex liquid and you have the giant vortex droplets. And so they coexist with the, with the uh, giant vortices. So giant vortices and droplets. And so this is the phase diagram with all these configurations attached to some points of this. You can see it's self-explanatory, so to say, type one with type two with the vortices, type one with the lamellas, uh, type and the intertype or type two one superconductors with clusters and with liquid and with dro droplets. And it looks like what we describe here using this simple theoretical model or expansion. It looks like it is very similar to what the people observe uh, before uh, in this intertype or this uh, low kappa superconducting materials. And now what will happen with the, I, I mentioned that the vortices behave, uh, the interaction between the vortices uh, is, uh, I told you that uh, it is uh, um, the multi multi vortex interaction becomes more, much more important. And here, what I, I will plot now, I will calculate the uh, the energy, uh, the interaction energy uh, of these vortex clusters, uh, which contains two vortices. So it will show you pairwise vortex interaction, three vortices, three vortex interaction, four vortices with different configurations. The first thing I will take it in the boundary, and you will see that basically the all the diagram, all the the patterns of these interactions looks the same. So basically, it tells you that the four vortex interaction is by means no is practically is not different from the thing from the pairwise vortex interaction. And uh, if you do the same for the for the when copper is up uh, is above this line, <clears throat> that's actually to the right of this line, then you will see exactly the same pattern, basically. But to the left, where no single vortices exist, you see completely different. You can see that the two vortex interaction is becomes completely attractive. Two vortices merge, but three vortices, they will stay uh, and they are stable because it has the minimum and this minimum of energy is the absolute minimum. The same is for the four vortex interaction. Then we continue further, and you will see that the gradually the three vortex interaction also becomes the sorry these three vortex the cluster with three vortices also become uh, becomes uh, uh, unstable gradually. But the four vortex and four vortex cluster is still stable. Then go to the lower boundary of this domain it's, it's still in this domain and you can see that the uh, two vortex interaction are already completely repulsive at attractive three vortex interaction is completely attractive four vortex interaction is still is attractive for this uh, triangular uh, triangular element this uh, parallelogram and for the square it is still uh, it is still stable so this tells you that actually uh, the multi vortex interaction becomes more and more important once you go deep into this uh, domain where no single vortices, I remind you, can exist. And how it is related to the cluster formation, for example, consider the situation in which you have the pairwise vortex interaction is completely attractive, three vortex interaction is attractive, and the four vortex interaction is kind of mixture, you can have the attraction and repulsion. And if you have, it means that if you have the clusters which contains small number of vortices, they are unstable and they merge into the giant vortex. And this is the same here, but if you increase the clusters, 
all the domain, the, 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 the flux through the system, so or through this particular cluster. Then it formed the cluster instead of the vortex. So suddenly, if the, uh, the for example, if the two giant vortices merge, they can form the cluster. And this is continuous for the larger field. So this explains why you uh, have the complete and full attraction of two vortices, but you still have the uh, mixed state in the system and not the type one superconductor. Okay, so this, I was talking about the bulk. What happens in the wires, in, on, in the films and in the wires? It's actually what happens in the films uh, in, in the wires is uh, the you have the extra uh, extra component of the theory, which are the straight field, stray fields, stray magnetic fields outside, outside the sample. And uh, essentially, uh, you have the uh, also kind of uh, mixture of the interaction with different characteristics length scales, and you have the competition of different length scales. Uh, and suppose that we start with this sample, which is type one superconductor, and you have the vortex attraction and you have lamellas, type one superconductor. So for the thick film, it does it has no difference with the bulk. So this is here on the upper part, upper part of this picture. On the lower part, you have the thin film made up of the same material. And uh, instead of the type one superconductivity, you actually see that this is now the type two superconductor because now the vortices are largely repulsive and the repulsion comes from the uh, stray fields because the fields are always repulsive. So in between you, it is expected that in between you will have still the area of this intermediate or type two, one domain or intertype domain uh, with some very strange configuration of vortices. And this is indeed what happens. This is the calculation which has been done by uh, the student of uh, um, Albina Aguiar. And uh, he came from Colombia. So this is really international, as I, as I, as I told you. So this is what uh, uh, we see. And uh, uh, we see quite strange pattern appearing. Uh, for example, uh, when the uh, this uh, to the left is the uh, thickness of the sample, and when the thickness of the sample it's measured in the coherence uh, lengths is eight, then you have something strange and some counterintuitive uh, appearing. Uh, you have the superconducting uh, molecules. I would say they're forming uh, the triangular or close to triangular lattice, and the same happens with the uh, when the thickness is uh, six. But then when the temperature decreases, uh, then you will see that these uh, strange uh, lattices, they will converge, they will, uh, they will form uh, some kind of labyrinths, some kind of uh, chains and then labyrinths. And uh, if you decrease this, uh, the, the sample size, the sample thickness, uh, then these uh, labyrinths, uh, they break down and they form the vortices. This vortice is actually not a simple vortices at first. Uh, this, these are the giant vortices with multiple fluxes. So what is actually why these labyrinths are forming? Uh, and uh, the reason is the following. Uh, what we have in the bulk uh, is uh, in this regime, we have the short range repulsion and the long range attraction. And this is because the clusters are formed. What happens in the uh, thin films because of the stray fields, you, in the short range, you can have repulsion in the long uh, or attraction. In the intermediate range, you will have attraction. And in the long range, you have re still repulsion because of the uh, stray fields. And this is a long range uh, interaction. They give the long range interaction. So the asymptotic is always overwhelmed. It's, it's always larger than everything else. And because of this, we know actually from uh, just, uh, it's a very general knowledge, so to say, that this kind of mixture of the two different length scales uh, form the, uh, the with the long range attraction it forms it it helps to form the uh, the stripes. So uh, now I will uh, show you the results of the calculations for the uh, for the wires. And for the wires we have the following. Uh, we have the uh, now now I showed you some the results from the bulk. 
and compare with what happens in, in, in wires. We take the wire again from, from made of uh, the type one material. So it's, uh, when it is thick, then it forms the usual stripes of the normal and the superconducting state. So this is equivalent of lamellas. But when this wire is very thin, it forms the chain of vortices. So it's an equivalent of the type two superconductivity as expected. In the middle, you will have something which reminds me this transition to the in between the two. So this is really intertype domain, so to say, for the wires. You have first the clusters of uh, the of vortices, then the clusters becomes larger and larger. Then they merge into the chains. So this is very. You, you can see this. This this is kind of obvious here. I don't have to explain this any further. Okay, now I will come and. Uh, uh, to describe another uh, types of two superconductors, uh, which is called the multiband superconductors, where this behavior was also found. And it was actually the source of the great controversy because originally uh, the people thought that uh, what they have seen is specific to the uh, uh, multiband structure of the uh, superconductivity. Multiband structure is essentially nothing but uh, that you have uh, several condensate coexisting in the same sample. And if you have two condensates, so you write the free energy, for example, it's example here, you have two bands and two condensates. And so you have two separate uh, Ginzburg-Landau part of the energy for each of those condensate. And you have the uh, the coupling, which is nothing but the Josephson coupling between the two condensates. So at first it was speculated uh, that uh, the strange vortex configurations which are found in this type of superconductors is uh, specific to the two-band system and they were nicknamed by the 1.5 superconductivity. But uh, the, none, uh, the other, other uh, researchers argued that uh, with two bonds, Actually, you, 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 you don't have anything so special. And this is related to the origin of the Ginsburg, of the, of, the, of the Landau theory of the phase transitions. And essentially what you see is nothing more but uh, what, you, what you can see in the one band material. So um, here we did the uh, recently at some calculations uh, just uh, for the two band system, for the two band model. and. Uh, uh, Actually, it all started with the 2015, also in Albina's group, uh, and where we have established the phase diagram uh, for the two-band system, and it looks like this phase diagram looks very much the same uh, as the diagram for the, uh, the for the one-band superconductors. Exactly in the same way, here we found we just followed these lines uh, going to and from. Uh, so this uh, with field uh, dec temperature decreasing and the temperature increasing, and we have found the same kind of patterns. So the uh, first you have the vortices, uh, vortex lattice. Uh, this vortex lattice then uh, breaks into the clusters, and then these clusters become smaller and smaller. It looks like the droplets. So basically, what we have done here in all these calculations is nothing but the re we repeated the same what we have seen in the uh, one band material. So here is the comparison between the two, the, the phase diagrams on the left um, for the two band material and for the single band material. Here are the points where we can to have taken the, uh, the, the configuration for the vortices. And on the right, we compare the configurations and you can see these are exactly the same. So we have, of course, the uh, vortex lattice one one. We have the clustering and two points two two, and we have then then the droplets. And these droplets uh, forms uh, they become more and more like a liquid. So you will have the liquidification. Basically, it's all the same. And uh, this uh, calculation shows you that essentially what you see in the two band model is exactly the same as what we can see in the single band model. Okay, now uh, I um, uh, come to describe the recent experiments, which is, was done in München. 
And these experiments, uh, unlike, for example, something like a magnetic decorations, which they see the, the vortices on the surface of the sample, and you can argue that uh, the effects are related to the surface only, but unlike this, the neutron experiments has the ability to look inside the sample bulk. And because of this, it is very, uh, very good experiments to show you uh, the configurations of the vortices. The uh, experiments uh, scheme is shown on the left, and you can have the neutron beam, which uh, passes through the uh, this sample, and because of the magnetic field, they uh, they distort it, and uh, they uh, you can see you 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 can measure uh, the form factor of the distribution. Uh, the um, and what they have measured uh, showed that actually you will have the clusterization of the vortices. How can you judge this from the form cluster? Essentially, you have the following: uh, you have the mo the the main uh, the main signature uh, of this uh, is uh, of, of of the intertype domain uh, and of the in intermediate mixed state with the clustering of the vortices. Uh, is in the middle, this middle point. This middle point, basically, this uh, these are the break reflections on the right. Uh, on, on sorry, the, the, the large one is the break reflections of the vortex lattice. But what is in the middle is the signature of the clustering. And uh, they have uh, done lots of uh, measurements, and they have uh, essentially they proved that this uh, clustering really takes place here in this diagram uh, when it is uh, it's a uh, color density diagram and this yellow yellowish uh, is uh, where the inter intermediate uh, mixed state uh, takes place in the clustering also you can compare the manifestation you can see the manifestation of the intermediate mixed states uh, it, just studying the intensity of the break peaks and themselves uh, is the temperature dependence, and uh, this saturates when you go to the lower temperature here. So if it is saturates, uh, then this is a signature that your uh, the vortex lattice clusterizes, and no further changes in the uh, in, in, in the <clears throat> uh, in in the intensity of the break peaks takes place. Okay, then what is uh, interesting in this experiment, which we particularly measure at here, which, uh, which I'm going to tell you now, is the current. They put the current inside the sample, and what they see that at some point the vortices start to move, and uh, the, there is a voltage. So the, this, the, the system uh, stopped to be superconducting because of the motion of the vortices. It takes place at uh, different uh, currents if you apply different magnetic field. But what they measure is how the uh, form factor changes with this current. And they found out that once the current uh, is uh, beyond this critical current, so the voltage is non-zero and the system is non-superconducting, this central point becomes, uh, the central points is changed. It elongates in one direction, which essentially points out that the vortices forming the kind of stripe patterns. So instead of the clusters, you will have the stripes of vortices. So this is what, what uh, I show. It's uh, uh, it's some details. They what how they did they measure this? Actually, they rotated the sample and they saw the changes in the uh, form factor. And if you rotate this in the direction of the stripes, then you see one pattern. And if you rotate in the directions counter the stripes, then you see the other pattern. So this is how you actually measure and you how do you prove that the patterns do appear. But of course, what you see is just the form factor or the Fourier transform of the vortex, dis vortex distribution. These are the results of the calculations, uh, which also has been done in uh, Pernambuco in, the, in, in Recife. Uh, it's uh, the collaborations between me and uh, the uh, student, the former student of uh, Albina and Albina Aguiar and uh, Professor Shanenka, also from the Ohio School of Economics. And this is what we get. Uh, we consider it the uh, system, uh, which has uh, the vortices are already formed the uh, the clustering, the cluster, clusters, clusters. So the vortices are clusterized. It's uh, uh, panel A. Then, when the current is applied perpendicular, 
the vortices started to move perpendicular to the current. So the current is from up to down, and the vortices start to move from left or from right to left. Then you will see that the vortices start to move, this, the clusters start to merge themselves into the stripes. And this is what we have this, uh, this uh, uh, dynamics of the vortices. And in the end, uh, before you had this, of course, we do not have this, um, the lattice structure because in the real niobium, uh, they have the uh, anisotropy and this fixes the direction of the lattice. We do not have, have the direction of the lattice in this uh, clusters fixed, even though you can see that the lattices, uh, the clusters have the lattice structure, but it is not oriented. But you have seen this uh, clustering, uh, it is reflected on the central point. And here, once the uh, clusters form stripes, the central point becomes elongated. And this is what you see in the experiment. So essentially, we can describe what, what is happening in the experiment. And here is the film. You can see how it uh, it's actually happens. This uh, it just uh, it shows the time evolution of the system. So the clusters, uh, the current flows from uh, vertically and uh, the vortices move horizontally, but uh, all these clusters eventually start to merge and uh, elongate uh, along perpendicular to the current flow. So this is what is now happening. And you can see that uh, all the voids inside this uh, clusters of vortices, they become smaller and smaller also. Quite an interesting motion. But uh, in a short while, you can see that you have the clusters. No, no, the, sorry, the stripes. Now what happens with this symbol, single, single cluster here? You can see it in more detail what happens with the clusters. And interestingly, that if uh, the clusters, it, it, it's even the sim single cluster, it becomes elongated and and, uh, and uh, eventually it uh, arranges itself into the stripe. So here, how it looks. And yeah, it's already a stripe. Okay, the last thing which I'm going to tell you is uh, a very interesting and um, new material where you can also have, uh, uh, first of all, you can have this intermediate uh, superconductivity type, but also some other effects which I'm going to tell you about briefly. And so the, uh, these are the class of the uh, superconductors in which you have uh, alongside the superconductivity, you have ferromagnetism or antiferromagnetism. And this is uh, the European uh, <clears throat> materials. Uh, the structure you can see here, uh, you can have the superconducting part, which is uh, related to the ferrum electrons and the spins, which uh, cause the magnetization related to the European spins here. They are specially, spatially separated. And because of this, the superconductivity coexists with the ferromagnetism. Unlike, for example, other materials like uranium, where super ferromagnetism suppress the superconductivity. Here, the curie temperature of the, super, of the magnetism is much lower than the superconducting transition temperature. And because of this, you can have this simultaneous uh, existence of the superconductivity in magnetism in the same sample. And uh, if this is so, you can have a very interesting situation in which you have the transition uh, between the type two and two type one superconductivity just once you uh, lower the temperature. How it happens? The explanation is very simple. Because of this, this is a ferromagnetic, a magnetic material and have the permeability, which is non-zero, non non-unit. Non it is greater than one. Uh, and once you uh, you approach the uh, the Curie temperature, then this permeability factor increases. 
Essentially, it increases the field inside the superconductor. So if you have the vortex, for example, uh, and you have the magnetic penetration length, which is the, uh, essentially, this is the radius of this vortex, magnetic vortex. When once the permeability increases, the magnetic field, effect, effective magnetic field inside this vortex increases also. But the flux stays the same. And if the vortex, uh, if the flux stays the same, but the vortex size becomes smaller, and then, oh, sorry, but the uh, magnetic field becomes larger, then the magnetic uh, size, uh, the, the size of the vortex must become smaller. And this is the reason why the uh, penetration lengths, the magnetic lengths of the superconductor decreases. And the once uh, you can, you can, by changing the temperature, you can reach the situation in which, uh, where the, uh, the magnetic, uh, so, sorry, the critical magnet, the magnetic uh, characteristic lengths becomes equal to the uh, uh, characteristic lengths uh, connected to the order parameter. And when it is so, then you can cross the line, and so the type one super, type two superconductor can become type one superconductor. And if it is so, then you have the intermediate uh, region, this intertype superconductivity. Here is just uh, don't even pay much attention, but this is the technicality of the using the same mechanism, the same the same uh, perturbation expansion we apply to the magnetic materials as well. And then what we get is the following: essentially, yes, you can have the uh, transition between the type one and type two superconductors in the same material. And what is even interesting, it takes place for each of such material, as long as it is type two super two material close to the critical temperature. So these materials, all these materials will have to show this change on the type of the superconductivity and intertype superconducting state in between. And of course, the vortices, uh, vortex lattice, um, of the type two superconductor becomes this uh, domains uh, to the Meissner phases inside, so this lattice breaks. And what they actually we saw with the measurements, which is recently has been not even published. This is the Meissner thesis still; it's not published. We indeed saw that uh, the uh, the vortex lattice, the original vortex lattice, once you change the temperature, it becomes uh, the lattice with some uh, Meissner phase inside. So it looks like the vortex lattice really breaks and the superconductivity uh, then and the type two superconductor gradually become the type one superconductor. Okay, so now I come to the almost to the end of my talk and uh, this answers to the questions which I put uh, which I which I asked myself at the, uh, at, at, at the beginning of this talk. How can we describe the intertype regime theoretically? It's uh, perturbation expansion close to the B point to this uh, to the special point is uh, very give a very satisfactory description. Is this a universal phenomenon? Yes, it is the universal phenomenon, and uh, it's actually related to the degeneracy. And the degeneracy is also related to the kind of self duality of the theory, which is essentially means that you have two. A characteristic lengths and these two characteristic lengths becomes equal. And because of this, uh, we have um, the this kind of regime can be observed almost in well in many, many systems. Uh, it, not only in the standard low kappa BCS superconductors, but in many, many band super, many band superconductors and thin films and in magnetic superconductors and possibly somewhere else. Okay, and to the last of things which I would like to discuss is a very speculative but very interesting topic. It's actually what we have found by calculating many of such materials is that uh, it's actually related to the very general phenomenon which is called the pattern formation in physics. Here on the left, you can see the results of the calculations for the film, thin films, and on the right is the distribution of the viral infections in the populations of the animals. <laughs> and you can see that these are really uh, very close. And the idea is that essentially 
why it is happening because of the competition of different uh, characteristic lengths, which was put forward by Alan Turing in his famous theory of the chemical uh, reactions, which was uh, so general that it applies to very many uh, physical and natural, not only physical, but biological, natural, chemical systems. And here, the last thing which I want to show you is the results which were recently published for the ferromagnetic superconductors. It is the same material at the same conditions, only you change the temperature, and the temperature is changed by the, I think, by the tens of the degrees, <laughs> by the tens of the, uh, of the degree, or, yeah, something like this. Less than a one, less than one degree. So you have lots of different patterns, and these patterns are all described by the general theory of the pattern formations, from convection to like house instabilities, maze patterns, ice on glass, and so on and so forth. So this is not still explained, uh, and it waited for the explanation, uh, but it is just I wanted you to show some very strange things which happens in superconductivity. And uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alexei, for this very, very nice, very nice talk. So now uh, we, sorry, we, we will start the, the panelist session. I will call people last question for you, okay, if they want, of course. So I will call Professor Angel Bustamante. Angel, Obrigado, are you? Eh, Albino. Please. My question Please. is, uh, thank you, no, Fils, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. In your, in one lamina, in your presentation, you about, you talk a uh, thin wire. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the uh, dimension, uh, diameter, in nanometers or micrometers model? Well, actually, we measure this uh, in the units of the coherent lengths. So depending on the material, uh, we started from something like uh, 50, which is essentially bulk, uh, and uh, down to two, which is, uh, I would say, well, in I think it's, if you take the material like aluminum, that would be lies close to 100 nanometers. So it's not one dimensional in this. Okay. Thing. Thank you very much. Albino, your microphone is turned on. Sorry, no, I will. Thank you, Isaiah. Uh, I'd like to call Professor Juan Carlos Gonzalez. Juan Carlos, are you there? Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Arvido. Well, uh, I, I was wondering about <clears throat> my. Uh, is what happens is we you know, uh, down the, the scale into nanostructure materials is, is the I don't know it's the same uh, the same problem because you talk about uh, about strip uh, you can say something about this uh, thank you indeed uh, sorry I did not understand quite understand. yes uh, <laughs> maybe I, I uh, speak uh, uh, very 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 quickly I was wondering what happened if we you know, down the scale you know, into the nanostructure material, because you talk about you know, thin films, you know, yeah. uh, wires, mm -hmm. and striped uh, materials. But if you down the scale you know, into nanostructure um, materials. Yeah, this, uh, if I understand this correctly, the question is what would be the influence of the geometry? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. It is true that uh, if you really have the sample which is on the level of the nanoscale, uh, then you will have some interference. Uh, but the phenomenon which I was talking about is quite general. This uh, uh, geometrical structures 
they also uh, lift the gener degeneracy of this point. And because of this, the geometrical factors, the multi-band factors, the temperature factors, they all act kind of similar. <laughs> You, you will still have some strange effects, uh, particular, you, know, you, you will have some, uh, essentially these influences will still be visible that you are in the intertype domain. And uh, because of this, you will have some very strange structures. For example, I can tell you that in close to this intertype domain, the interaction with the boundaries of the sample, they also change. For example, vortices, they uh, in the type two superconducting material, they usually repel from the boundaries because they have the barriers. Uh, they, they, it's very difficult to enter and to, 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 to leave the, the sample. Once you go to the type one superconductor, this changes. And in the middle, you will have the situation when, for example, vortices are attracted to the boundaries uh, or, and they are they are attracted to the long range and they are repelled from the short range. So they are located kind of close to the boundaries, these vortices. And this is why we have seen. So this, this is very, very unusual, I would say. And I would add one more thing. It's actually, uh, this is one of the reason why we, uh, we approach experimentalists and they were very interested because it can be used uh, in the measuring devices. Mm -hmm. This 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 effect. If you if you somehow can uh, uh, change uh, the system from the type one to the type two superconducting, for example, you by lowering the temperature in the ferromagnets, then this can be used as kind of uh, devices which measure very effectively the magnetic field and squeeze or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, many things. So a lot of information <laughs> I would like to know to write. But uh, many thanks for your for your answer, no? Professor Albino. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm Thank okay. you, Professor okay. Juan Thank Carlos. You. Now I would like to to, to call Professor Ricardo Celis. Ricardo, are you there? Thank you, Albino. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Dr. Alexei Bagop. Uh, no questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ricardo. And now we move from Peru to Colombia, Alexei. Mm -hmm. I'd like to call prof Professor David. David, are you there? No, no. So let's try. Professor Hiro. Hello, Hiro. No, they're not there. So move to Venezuela now. Uh, Professor Jose Fermi. Muito obrigado, Buenos Lino. dias. Thank you, Alexei, for your very didactical talk, at least for me. Okay, I have. <clears throat> Two questions. First, you talk about a liquid phase, right? A liquid phase of the vortices, right? Yes. In this sense, I would like this is very naive question. Uh, I would like to know if in this range, when vortices interact, uh, this interaction is similar to what we observe when two water wavelets interact. Uh, sorry, what, what interaction? Two water wavelets. When you have two waves in the water, two wavelets in water. Ah, uh, two wavelengths. Yeah, I, I cannot answer this question because I think that I cannot really say uh, that you can have the simple model of the vortex interaction. Maybe you can. Uh, we we are not that we did not study this yet that precisely. We can have that. Yes, you can have two wave two lengths two characters. If I understand the uh, the question correctly, uh, the question is 
if you can uh, describe this using the simple potential between the vortices. And this simple potential have the two different uh, length scales. Is this correct? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about interference. I, it's very difficult to say because you can see that in this system of uh, this vortex system, you cannot reduce the interaction between vortices to the interaction between two vortices. Yes. And this, in this sense, it is very strange. Like in typical liquid, uh, you will have, for example, like take the water. Then you have molecules, and you have something like the short-range repulsion, long-range short-range repulsion. Then the repulsion changes, uh, and um, uh, then you will have. But everything can be described using the model in which only two molecules interact. Yes. Thank you. Here. Uh here it is absolutely out of the question if you have two vortices they move together and they merge they have three vortices they also merge but if you have 10 they form the cluster <laughs> yes and we do not know yet uh, if there is any analog of the in 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 other parts of the physics we only know what we did why we call this liquid we calculated the form factor. And we see this transition, like uh, you have uh, in the usual uh, lattice, you will have the form factor which oscillates, uh, then it drops, uh, but you still have the uh, something which uh, the uh, vortices cannot move very close one to another. <laughs> so in, in this sense, there is a uh, the hard core of repulsion. Yes. The, uh... The last question, very short. Mm -hmm. You show uh, a slide in which you made an experiment. You showed uh, you made this experiment in Pernambuco, where you applied a current perpendicular. Yeah. Uh, I I would like to know what happened if you applied the current along the vortices. Yeah, this we haven't done, and uh, this was not the 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 uh, the reason for this experiment. We, I think, we will do this. Yes, uh, we we actually plan to do this because it looks like you can also control the superconductivity type if you apply also the uh, the current along the vortices, but. We have not done this, neither experiment. Well, experiment has been done, <laughs> but there is no theoretical explanation for what is seen in this experiment. But I hope in the next year, then I will be able to answer your question. Thank you, Alexei. Congratulations. Thank you, Femi, for your contribution. Yeah, now I will like to call Professor Stuart Holmes. Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Very, very interesting presentation there. A lot of information, which is not exactly my field, but I, I'd like to ask a, a technological question. If I wanted to combine type two superconductor with a semiconductor, say to study Andreev effects, mm -hmm. Perhaps study a Majorana fermion or something like something interesting that we could make a qubit from. Mm -hmm. Is there? We we know that interfaces are very important. You, you briefly mentioned interfaces. Is there anything about the um, about the intertype behavior that would be, say, detrimental to Andrea scattering? Or do you have any comment on? perhaps combining these materials with uh, a, a semiconductor. Yeah, we actually, we think about this, we are thinking about this question. Yeah. And uh, at this moment, our understanding is the following, that yes, you can by combining different materials, uh, for example, combining the, uh, the superconducting materials on the top of the ferromagnet, 
uh, and probably on the top of the uh, also of the metal as well, probably semiconductor as well. And by doing this, you can in principle reach the situation in which you have this uh, two band superconductor when one band is active and the other band is this uh, substrate uh, kind of. And uh, if this is so, then you will re you can in principle reach the situation in which the superconductivity is neither of the two type. And then you will have the behavior which I was talking about in the lecture. What will be the influences on the Andreev effect? I cannot tell. This is the matter of the investigation. But I'm pretty sure that some interesting effect can be achieved once you uh, merge several you have the layered structure, for example, in this materials. Thank you. It's very. I'll look up some of your papers. It's very, very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart, for your contribution. Now I would like to call Professor Mihail. Mihail Kroitoru. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Uh, I don't have questions for this because I was partly involved. Yeah. Mikhail was Thank the you, author of one of the papers. <laughs> he knows everything about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I would like to, to call Professor Isaías de Oliveira. Professor Isaías. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much for your excellent talk, Professor Alexei Fungov. Uh, I've already read uh, some of your papers uh, and sitting it in my paper. So I don't have any question in the first part of your talk, but uh, the last part of your talk was very interesting uh, because it's new for me. When you introduced the, uh, the, uh, the study of thermomagnetism, uh, in, in order to change the type one, to type two, and of course uh, the intertype, uh, it's new for me. I didn't read in anything about this, and uh, I would like, to, if it possible, you say that the transparency to Albino to Albino send for us because it's a uh, very interesting. I don't know, but uh, the quality of your work is so good, and so I would like to uh, read. Uh, the references inside of this. Thank you very much, Professor. Yeah, actually, uh, just a comment because what I was talking in the second part of the talk is not even yet published. It is ready for the publication. I've been announced uh, the paper. It is uh, being prepared. But in what has been measured, because we delayed the publication of this paper, because apparently what we have predicted was measured recently. And we are now pretty sure that we can just add the results of the experiments and say, here, it has been found. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. OK, Take Thank you, Isaias. Now I'd like to call Professor Wilmer. Yeah? Uh, Wilmer? Hello. Hello, Albino. Hello, Alexei. Thank you video. very much. Thank you, Alex. Open your video, please. No, it's not possible, uh, Professor, because uh, okay. I know okay. <laughs> in proper space. Okay. But uh, th thank you, thank you, Alexei. Very good presentation. And uh, I don't have question because uh, I because you have been calculate. You have calculated. Yes. <laughs> I know, I know a lot of our work, <laughs> and I don't have, I don't have questions. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Alexei. Very good, good presentations. Every day uh, I know more about intertype domain. Okay, and I, I'm very excited by the, uh, the interface uh, for magnetic superconductor. Uh, this is a very uh, exciting topics, and I suppose we uh, and Albino work in, in this line, also with Alexei and Arkady Mihail. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Wilma. Uh, Alexei, I, I just want to make a comment now. During your presentation, and I, it came to my mind that. 
that maybe we can see the intertype using MOS Bauer. Experiment uh, doing. It is exactly yes. It's uh, and I think we, it it has been already done. It was okay. uh, this using most power spectroscopy yes, Ms. Muon uh, was the uh, if you calculate the uh, uh, the distribution the histogram of the distribution of the magnetic field, then mm -hmm. you will be able to see the intertype domain by appearing the two peaks. Uh, one is close to zero and one is close to some value. And uh, we have done these calculations and it is indeed so that everything is alike because you have the Meissner phase and you have the phase uh, which is uh, uh, just the standard, uh, um, the standard abricots of lattice. But indeed, okay. yes. But Maybe we, we can try to do it in this kind of root and eight superconductor. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. I, I, will, I will talk to Professor Anha Bustamante to see if he, he can measure us. Okay, I don't see any panelists more. But I know that we have more questions. Uh, and Luis is telling me that uh, we have a question from Professor Alexander Polasek. Luis, Hello. Can, you, can you read the question? Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, there, is, there are some questions, Alex, Alexei Vagop. Thank you very much for your talk. Very interesting one. Uh, through the web page, the social media from the University of San Marcos, uh, Alexander Polasek sent some questions. First, greetings to Albino. It is nice to see you again after several years. They, Thank you. They, they are Professor Vago. Thank you for your um, the amazing presentation. Uh, my question is quite simple. Could you, f could you please share a PDF of your presentation with us? <laughs> Uh, just another, just another. Yes, yes, yes. I can just send it to Albina, and uh, he would share it with everybody. So I send it to the coordinator. Actually, I have sent this to the coordinator, but uh, I, I can, <laughs> I can do, I can do this one. <laughs> another, another question from Alexander Polasek, uh, through the Faculty of Physics of the University of San Marcos. Just another simple question. It seems that the interplay between type one and type two might happen in NGB2. It is, is that right? If yes, what are the possible implications for M NGB2 behavior and its implication under cent center conditions, conditions where the interplay might occur? And G NGB2, what is this, sorry? MGB2. And magnesium diboride. Ah, magnesium diboride. Yes, yes, yes. GB2, yes. Okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> you have touched the very delicate question. And uh, yes, I. my opinion is that what you can see in the magnesium diboride and what you see in magnesium diboride is exactly the same as what you see in the uh, low kappa super, superconductors with the intertype domain. This, this is just a standard thing. And uh, if you really calculate why it is happening, for example, quite far away from, uh, uh, you know, from kappa is equal one point, uh, it's kappa zero, is that uh, because uh, in the two band systems, this uh, the regime, the, the 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 interval of the intertype domain is much much wider, and uh, that's why you can see this. In, in 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 the very very large domain of the parameters, temperatures, and so on. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, uh, from the public of the University of San Marcos, there no, no more other question. Only Alexander Polasek sends greetings to Albino, which has been long time having after several years has not seen him, and also to uh, Professor Vagop as well. The, Greetings from Alexander Polasek. 
Thank you, Alvino. Thank you. Thank you, Luis. Uh, uh, Alexei, o prof, professor Alexander Polasek, he works at CEPEL in Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. He's a center for research connected to the power, electric power and energy company. Uh, I think you met, met him some years ago. Maybe, yes. Okay, I would like to, to ask Shimena, uh, please, if we have questions from the people from Colombia, public. Shimena, are you there? Buenos días, Professor Albino. Good morning, Professor yeah. Alexei. Eh, en este momento, por este lado, eh, we don't have questions from here, mm -hmm. eh, but eh, we can pass uh, to Eliana for the other reads. Networks here. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jimena. Eliana, please. Mm, good. good morning. Good morning, Professor Albino. Thanks for uh, the space. Uh, at this moment, we don't have questions from the uh, Colombian public, but uh, we say uh, thanks a lot for this interesting topic. Thank you, Professor Alexei. Thank you, Eliana. Professor Fermi, are there any questions from the pu public from Venezuela? No, there is no questions, but uh, there is a comment from one student regarding to your comment, Albino, with respect to the interfaces. Uh, yeah. As long uh, with the interfaces, you uh, you propose the most power, right, to detect those interfaces. Yeah. But have you ever thought about uh, magnetic resonance? Because the rest magnetic resonance is very um, detects those uh, interfaces effect. It's possible to apply magnetic resonance. Alexei, it's it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I cannot really comment on this uh, with the magnetic resonance. Uh, no, I, I I simply cannot really say I I cannot say anything. So I would say okay. that would be very difficult to see this. We have. But we have to seek to to to, to find a, a material that is that have very strong NMR signal. And mm -hmm. what I'm thinking just now, it should be a material with fluor, fluorine. This will be the best. But I'll I'll, I'll take note of your question. Good good question. NMR is a local problem as as neutral. neutral. Yes, but yeah. uh, think about the uh, EPR. It's very sensitive to yeah. inter uh, interfaces. Yeah, we, uh, I'll, I'll think, think about it. Think about it, it. I will let you know. Okay. Maybe. Thank you again, Albino. I say. Thank you, Ami. Uh, now, now, I would like to ask you, uh, Arturo, uh, do you have any questions from people from uh, Mexico? Mexico? No, Mexico. we have no questions. Many thanks, Professor Alexei. Thank you, thank you, Arturo. And now I would like to call uh, Professor Felipe Mondak, I, I think he is not here. Felipe, are you there? No. So, Alexei, I am obliged to, to say another, some, some, some words, because you see, the, the general secretary already appeared. Yeah, <laughs> he's checking everything. He's right. the big boss. 
No, 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 no. Just uh, well, just another message in the uh, from the okay. Faculty of Physics, the University of San Marcos, is from again from Alexander Polasek. He said that he worked uh, he worked at Cepel Electrical Engineering Research Center in Rio Janeiro, and his email is Polasek at cepel.br and also Alexander Polasek at uh, gmail.com. That's the last and well uh, maybe uh, we have the last maybe the word so to say goodbye words from Alex Alexei Bagop if if there is not any other question from the public or any other question from the panelists yeah but uh, I would like to to make our broadcasting of our network your general secretary <laughs> So, I'm sorry, Albina, maybe one comment I can say. Be free? You yeah, can. okay. Just I'm thinking, uh, just it's, it's a comment uh, we could discuss later. It's probably... Yeah, you open your camera, please. Ah, my camera. Just a second. Uh, wait, wait. So, wait, 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 Mihail just wait. appeared. No, no, I'm, I was always here just last time. No, you, just a, no, you appear with a comment. <laughs> no, but, yeah, the comment about the, since uh, this material deals with magnetic field, and there was a question about Mersbauer, there was a question about NMR. What I'm thinking is about the inverse Faraday effect, which is effectively again the magnetic field. And the in when you submit to a superconducting sample, which is uh, samples which Alexei showed today, mostly they have relaxation parameter which is imaginary. That means inverse Faraday effect is non-zero in this sample, and then uh, submitting electric field that means the laser with the circle of polarization can can be a sub, can be a tool to detect uh, to tool to detect this uh, this uh, this regime let's say <clears throat> this mm -hmm. is just just an, an, a comment it's not a question mm -hmm. because in this Faraday effect is effectively a magnetic field and the interplay of external magnetic field with that magnetic field which is present already in the sample could be somehow a tool to detect the, the behavior. <clears throat> yeah, and this is great. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Yeah, just to comment. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, Mihail, thank you. We, we are going to, to think about this. So, as I said, I, I, I have to say some, some words before asking you for your final words. Alexei, so this network, LAFMAT, is the Latin American network of um, condensed matter physics and material science. is organized by several universities in Latin America. We have the University Nacional Mayor de São Marcos in Lima, Peru. Universidade de Universidad Barranca, Nacional de Barranca, in Peru, Universidad Nacional de Colombia, in Bogotá, Universidad Nacional de Colombia, in Barranquilla, Universidad del Norte, in Colombia, Universidad de Zulia, in Venezuela, o Centro de Investigação de Materiales Avanzados, México, o Silver Staff no México, a Universidade Católica del Norte no Chile, a Universidade San Sebastián em Porto Montt, Chile, Stuart, I will say also the University College of London, and University of Cambridge, Universidade Federal Rural de Rio de Janeiro, no no Brasil e Universidade Federal de Pernambuco em Recife. So, with this, I give you the opportunity of saying your final words. Alexei. Yeah, 
and now it is spread uh, across the it's it's not only it's not only latin america but also includes uh, the europe and uh, it was me and saying in russia <laughs> so we we are now making an empire uh, where the sun <laughs> never goes down <laughs> <laughs> okay good well and, and, and i'm actually uh, par partially i'm an australian as well so, <laughs> so going around the world going around the world yes spreading around the world it's spreading yeah it's spreading you see your general secretary is spreading around the world okay let's can, say can you Thank moment you. thank you alvino thank you alex alexei Pagop, for your interesting talk today um alexei as you as alvino has told you uh, we organize every week every saturday uh, online talks and let me tell you which uh, to the public uh, and to the public which are the next talks uh, for next saturday okay um on first of october uh, the speaker is Antonio Jefferson, and his talk is about crystal growth and superconductive properties of uh, the chalcogenides mm -hmm. intercalated with uh, transition metal and rare earths. He is from the USPA Brazil. Um, in October 8, uh, the talk is from Dr. Peter Newton from the University of Cambridge. His talk is Composite Elements Barcodes as portable magnetic mem memories. October 15, Armando Navarro from the University Federal of Pernambuco. October 22, uh, Sergio, Sergio Resende from the University Federal of Pernambuco as well. October 29, Jose Luis Ochoa from the Institute of Venezuelan Institute of Scientific uh, uh, Research. Uh, the, the chair will be uh, Professor Jose Fermin. In November 5th, uh, Dr. Adrian Ionescu from the University of Cambridge is going to give a talk as well. Um, uh, November 12th, uh, Professor Diego Lamas uh, from Argentina. Uh, uh, Professor David Landines from the University of Colombia will be uh, the, the chair. In November 19, uh, Professor Edson Sardella. Uh, Professor Isaiah Gonzaga Oliveira is going to be the chair. In November 26, Sergio Conejeros Espindola from the University of Antofagasta in Chile. The moderator thing that will be Professor Arturo Martinez from Mexico. Um, December the 3rd uh, will be the speaker Leopoldo uh, Suescun from Uruguay. Is Professor David Landines is going to be the, the chair. In December, 10th, Alexander uh, Polasek is with Professor Isaias is, is the chair. And finally, <coughs> December 17, uh, Carlos Santos, uh, which is the Im invited speaker from Professor Albino Aguiar. L then we are going to have for Christmas and New Year, we are going to have uh, uh, some uh, rest for some holidays, and then we are going to start the next year again. Well, Thank you, Alexander Vagop. Thank you, everybody, too. Maybe we can open everybody's cameras, Albino, to... Yeah, please. Uh, everybody, open uh, the camera, please. Uh, of the of camera, to just to say goodbye for Alexei. Thanks, Thank for you, Alexei. See the next one. Thank you, indeed. Ciao, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Abrazo. Goodbye. Thank you. Alexei. Thank you, Alexei. Thank you. Hasta luego. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Gracias, gracias. Okay, Alisa, you can close. When you close, everything will be closed.